Hey, what's up, y'all? Um, so somebody sent me a YouTube link to a bunch of like cartoon, it's cartoon running sound effects, basically. And I decided I, well, I mean, just take a listen to this. That's pretty standard. But I was listening to this first one. I was like, yo, that's fire. So I grabbed it and find the BPM, which is 90 or 180, depending on how you want to do this. And then... So we've done that. I've also chopped up this second thing here. I just used Renoise's auto chop and kind of mapped it out. I left some of these flams in here like this one because I wanted to use that. I've sequenced it out into a little loop here and then I added some panning automation for spatialization. I literally just threw in random points and then adjusted it to sound good. So let's take this and then throw a little bit of tape delay on it. There's some EQ here. And something else I want to do, I want to I want to kind of get that envelope under control. Uh, so I'm going to add some modulation. I'm going to add this little looped envelope modulation and then I'm going to try and map the depth to a macro control so we can vary it across uh, throughout the composition. So let's see here. Let's just get a, let's set this to beats. Uh, I want, wait, is that beats or is that, okay, no, that's mil, okay, this is milliseconds, this is beats. Let's just throw some points in here. That's pretty cool. Jesus, I'm sorry. No, I, I did not. Okay, so I think what we can do here, if we want to make this, if we want to make this variable, uh, and I would like to make this variable, is I think we can map a macro control. So let's bring those down. Uh, and for some reason, I believe we found a bug uh, where the external editor, yeah, that's nice. Cool, and then we can hide the macros and then, oh, nice. Anyway, uh, so once we get the macro controls down, I'm going to try and... trying to see if there's some handy way of, uh, let's see here, so I want to do 0.25 beat, uh, can I not do 0.25 beats? Nope. All right. So... I think what I can do though is subtract Is that correct? Right. So if there was some way for... Okay, I think that might be what we want. All right, good. Close enough. All right, so we'll take our macro control here and map it from zero, and then we'll invert this envelope here. So yeah. And then because there seems to be kind of a I 
think I'm okay with that. Okay, so then at the... Okay, so zero is... Cool. All right, so then up here, we will have this second volume operand. Max was like 0.6 or something like that. Let's see if this... So now zero should be... Okay, uh, we want to map this the other way around, where minimum is one. So here... So now we can vary, uh, we can throw a macro control in here and vary how much um, envelope shaping we apply. Kind of cool to get that a little poppier. Cool. Okay, let's grab some... Okay, where is my Maybach Music Group drum kit? Here we go. All right. Let's grab some snaps. That's good. I hate it when there's reverb on the samples already. Maybe I don't want to use the snap. Cool, maybe I can just use this one. Cool. That's dry. It's sufficiently dry. And let's grab just a kind of a standard kick, maybe. a little uh, uh, kind of kind of like a double time vibe going on right now okay where's my Vox at uh, oh yo I can throw in just Rick Ross going huh uh huh uh huh uh huh uh huh not actually do that um, but what I want is I want I want like kind of a double timey hi-hat thing going on here so instead of Rick Ross let's just use some hi-hats let's go for just some random drum machine that I happen to have laying around cool That's pretty cool. Uh, that sample's a little bit, a little bit abrupt, or like not quite abrupt enough for my tastes, actually. Uh, that could be good. I would like to soften the attack up, maybe, maybe a little bit. That's good. Uh huh. And uh, because this seems like something weird that like a trap producer would do, let's alternate stereo channels here. That's pretty cool. Let's grab some more weird uh, old drum samples. No, that would need to be like a much fatter. Uh, 
I don't think that Tom Sample is going to do it for us. Uh, I wonder if any of these sound cool if you play them in reverse. That might sound cool. Uh, like if we threw that in every other snare hit maybe, or snap. That could be cool. Cool, and then since we don't really need that transient to be quite as ferocious, since we've got the snap there, we can just soften that. Cool. stereo thing on this as well. I like throwing on like a panning LFO that's just super fast. Let's see how that does. And then cut the lows out of this, so we'll grab our I don't know, we'll go for an analog filter. Uh four pole moog. That's cool. And then I want some tape delay on that as well. Alright, that sounded pretty cool so far. Um, I want to sidechain this a little bit, so here's the Renoise way of sidechaining things. You grab a gainer, and then on the channel that you want to sidechain something, y'all know this already, on the channel you want to sidechain something from, uh, what track is that, track 5, we'll use the gainer. reverb for the snap so I'll just grab auto park from Big G's Lexicon 480L which is fantastic and I use auto park on everything it's fresh And then to kind of glue the whole drum track together, I like to use small space reverbs. So like I've got, uh, let's just grab one of these non-linear ones. Like I like using like the closet reverb here. So check this out. That's maybe a bit too much. Let's grab a uh, slug bug maybe. So you can hear it's doing something weird. You can kind of get a sense of the space that it adds. It's a little more obvious if you grab, like, Wreck. I just find that using small reverbs like that can help to put all the drums kind of in the same place. Uh, but then I'll grab, like, a bigger reverb, like... I'm just turning the color up because uh, I don't necessarily want the reverb on all of the low end, it's not super conducive to what I'm trying to do. 
Uh, a trick, I think it was Steve Duda said this like years and years ago, that he likes to turn the reverb up until he can just hear it and then turn it down a little bit. So that's pretty solid. And then let's grab Pressferk and use the uh, drum compressor because it works really well and I like it. Just glues things together, you know? Um, Alright, so now we've got this, and let's make an 808. Uh, we can use my plugin Camphor, which is uh, previously known as Panther, but I've changed the name. Uh, let's... Maybe just do a C, just play a C. Uh, so, as you can see, it's pretty good at sine waves. You know, I'm gonna save that until just a moment. All right, turn the release down. Just wanna catch that. All right, and then let's throw, let's make that uh, I'll route the envelope to the oscillator phase, so then when I pull this... Messing with this, or kind of thinking about it earlier, I decided that I wanted to to do some like pitch bend type stuff here. So I'm gonna start with zero, and then I'm gonna sweep up like an octave, but like way faster than that. should maybe pick a different note so that that uh, we're just going to throw in some more pitch bins here We'll see what that sounds like. Maybe it'll be cool. Maybe it's a mistake that will be a good thing that it happened. Sure, why not? And then I'll throw some of these in. What is that, F sharp? All right. Let's dirty this up a little bit.
let's just see what this does when I... That's pretty tight. We've got some other parameters we can automate too. I think we'll just do this. I realize this is not like a traditional 808, but I've been just trying to do weird stuff with my uh, kind of 808 style bass lines because I 808s are dope, but it's 2016 and I feel like we should be getting a little more creative with it. I've got this plugin chain called Fat Kick where I run it through a bunch of compressors and like tube amp sims, and let's see what that sounds like. Uh I'm pretty happy with that, and I don't even know how long I've been going for. Let's take a look. Um, 22 minutes. Cool. That's that. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know.